Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on EMC consideration. For this video, I'm going to discuss all the common test EMC standard, mainly target for a consumer electronics product. This video, I'm going to emphasize on radiate immunity. Okay, so RI, radiate emission, RE. Okay, so all these tests are mainly for RE and also for RI. Okay, so we have this IEC 61000-4-3. We have also this IEC 61000-4-39. And last but not least, under this IEC, we have this 61000-4-8. We also have the CISPR 11 and also CISPR 32 standard. In US, we will test according to FCC Part 15 or Part 18. Okay, so this will be the objective for this video. We are going to discuss okay, on the EMC test and management standard based on RE and also RI. This will be the Part 48 series discussion on EMC consideration. So if you're keen to know more about EMC, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Over there, okay, you will find a series of discussion on EMC. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and also the subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Guys, feel free to give me comment, also suggestion of topic so that the quality of this channel can be further improved. Once again, guys, really, thank you so much. I have discussed this briefly on the Part 45 series discussion. These slides here actually show all the commonly used EMC standard for a consumer electronic product which does not have any wireless communication functionality. Okay, which means that this device under test, they don't have any wireless communication at all. So from here, you can see that there are actually two cables. Okay, one cable is basically connected to the AC main. Another cable can be simply the I.O. port. Okay, so basically, these are all the tests that we need to done on a consumer electronic product. At the part 46 series discussion, I have kickstart the tests that need to be executed at the AC main port here. So under this AC main port, there are actually three tests that need to be executed. So the first test will be the IEC 61000-4-11. Okay, so beside this AC voltage deep variation and interrupt, we also need to do this IEC 61000-3-2, which is the harmonics, and also IEC 61000-3-3, which is the flicker. Okay, beside Okay, at the part 46 series discussion, I have also discussed the test that will be executed at the chassis of the product. Okay, basically will be this electrostatic discharge. Okay, basically governed by this IEC 61000-4-2. Okay, so after this, at the part 47 series discussion, I mainly want to discuss about the conductor immunity and also the conductor emission. Okay, so over here, you can see that there are actually two cables, which I have illustrated early on. So these two tables subjects to perform under the conductor immunity and also the conductor emission test. I have also clearly highlighted that at the part 47 series discussion, okay, if this is an I.O. port, okay, one thing you realize that I don't have the search, okay, because the search is mainly for the AC main, I search the voltage, how for this I.O. port, I don't have any means to search in terms of my voltage. And also, over here, as illustrated by the conducted emission, okay, I have highlighted that under U.S., you don't really need to do any conducted emission on the I.O. port. Mainly for U.S., you just need to do the conducted emission at the AC main. So basically, this is what I have discussed at the part for the 7 series. For this series, which is the part 48, I mainly want to concentrate on RI, 
radiate immunity and also RE, radiate emission. Okay, so under radiate immunity, we have these three tests, which I'm going to kickstart the discussion. After that will be by radiate emission. What are all these radiate immunity tests? Let's take a look on this IEC 61000-4-3. Basically, this is actually applicable to the immunity requirement of electrical and also electronics equipment to radiate electromagnetic energy. Okay, the test method document in this part of IEC 61000, basically they describe a consistent method to assess the immunity of an equipment or system against RF electromagnetic field from RF source not in close proximity to the EUT. Okay, let me further illustrate on this. For example, under this 61000-4-3, okay, you have an antenna. Okay, basically, the signal generator generates the RF disturbance noise. Basically, they go through the amplifier and basically they radiate up by this antenna. Okay, so typically, the antenna will be placed either 3 meter or 10 meter away from your EUT. This is what it means. Okay, they will not be in close proximity to the EUT, either 3 meter or 10 meter. Basically, we generate the RF view, okay, either 3 volt per meter or 10 volt per meter. We see whether your EUT can still function or not. So basically, this is under this far field test, IEC 610-4-3. Okay, so next, we have also this IEC 61000-4-39. Okay, so basically this evaluate electrical and electronics equipment when exposed to radiate immunity. More specifically, the test pertain to radiate electromagnetic energy from RF transmitter used in close proximity to electronics. Okay, so basically this is basically when you, you have built a device, typically very near you have another device that they actually radiate out a lot of electromagnetic wave, for example. So these tests actually emulate like a real test, basically, because you know that this product is going to function side by side with another product. So basically, you are going to do this form of test so as to ensure your EUT still can function even at that particular harsh environment. Okay, so next come into the magnetic. Okay, so Electronics products are tests for immunity to power frequency magnetic field okay, under this IEC or EN61000-4-8 okay, to ensure their continuity reliable operation when placed in service. The EROPE EMC directive currently mandate power frequency magnetic field testing for certain category of equipment as a condition for obtaining the CE mark before shipping product to member states of the Europe Union. Okay, so this IEC or EN61000-4-8 testing is intent to demonstrate the immunity of equipment when subject to power frequency, magnetic field relate to the specific location and installation condition of the equipment. So this is what you mean. Okay, so basically this test is any actually for certain category of equipment. Okay, not all the equipment need to do this test, only a specific certain category of equipment. Okay, so this test is basically intent to demonstrate the immunity of equipment when they are actually subject to a power frequency magnetic field. Okay, which means that you put this particular product at a location okay, that bounds to have this kind of severe magnetic field and what you need to do is you need to ensure your EUD still can function as normal. Okay, so basically this will be the test under this IEC 61000-4-8 which denote as magnetic. Okay, so last but not least, let's quickly understand the test under the radiate emission. Okay, we have this CISPR 11 or CISPR 32 and also FCC part 15 and part 18. Okay, before I continue, you can see that this CISPR 1132 or FCC part 15 and part 18, they are actually common. Okay, whether is it conducted emission or radiate emission, they actually under these two, either by the Europe groups or the FCC group, they lump this okay, under one standard okay, for radiate emission 
and also conducted emission. I have explained what is actually a CISPR 11. Okay, so CISPR 11 is mainly to target industrial equipment, scientific equipment, and also medical equipment. And because of this, basically you can say that most of the equipment actually fall into one of these category. And therefore, CISPR 11 is in fact one of the most popular EMC test standard. Okay, so this test standard, like what I mentioned earlier on, is specified the limit line for both the conducted and also radiated emission. Okay, CISPR 32 is basically because nowadays we were we live in actually in a digital world. Okay, so therefore we classify this as a multimedia equipment. So therefore we have new class which is under this CISPR 32. As for FCC, okay, it's mainly to target for America. Okay, so FCC is by America Federation Communication Commission. Okay, so basically they regulate the amount of electromagnetic interference that allowed from the your EUT, for example. That could be computer, TV, laptop, television. And basically we have a wide range of low power transmitter. So in under this FCC part 15, any electronics device that they actually operate at a frequency of 9 kilohertz or higher, you actually need to comply in this FCC part 15 standard before you can start to sell this product in the United States. Okay, so basically this is the test that fall under RE. So with this, I actually have more or less conclude all the tests. And basically, again, I like to put these slides here. So over these slides, you can see that all the common EMC test and measurement standard for a consumer electronic product. So with this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please sub to like and subscribe. Once again, thank you so much for strong support. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now. Thank you so much.